Hi guys, my name is Natasha and in today's video I'll tell you about two very important holidays in Russia. The Defender of the Fatherland Day celebrated on the 23rd of February and the International Women's Day celebrated on the 8th of March. So why I decided to combine these two holidays in one video? Not because I was late for making a separate video on the 23rd, being overwhelmed by the growth of my channel, but just because these two holidays come side by side in Russia. And this is reflected in the fact that even though the Defender of the Fatherland Day is a day when we celebrate our military achievements and the International Women's Day is a day when we celebrate women's rights, in today's Russia, these holidays tend to lose their initial meaning and we celebrate them just as a men's day and a women's day. And this is reinforcing gender stereotypes. I thought that it is an interesting topic to discuss, so let's figure it out. I will start with the history of the Defender of the Fatherland Day. And honestly, for me, it was really hard to follow all these events that preceded the establishment of this holiday, because when I'm reading these Soviet abbreviations like CK, RDS, RP, I don't understand them. But from what I understood, basically, in 1919, it was originally proposed to celebrate the anniversary of the Workers' and Peasants' Red Army on the 28th of January. But this was postponed and the holiday was established only on the 23rd of February. And this is a poster of events celebrating these holidays in the city of Pskov in 1919. It says here about military parades, free film screenings and performances for the Red Army and workers. In 1938, Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin proposed to interpret the 23rd of February as a day of victory over Germans near Narva and Pskov in 1918, but uh, according to some archival data, there were no battles near that cities on that day. But anyways, there is one more event on that day that Stalin is responsible for and that I wish was talked about more often today. And now I mean the deportation of Chechen and English people that started on the February 23rd in 1944. I think that uh, while celebrating the February 23rd, we should not forget these uh, shameful stains on our history, even though these two events are not connected with each other. Anyway, so until 1991, this holiday was observed as the Soviet Army and Navy Day. And in 2002, Russian parliament reintroduced it as the Defender of the Fatherland Day. And now I will tell you about how we celebrate this holiday in Russia. Preparation begins a couple of weeks earlier. In stores you might see some items with military symbols like tanks, soldiers and stars. For example, this is yogurt that I saw in some cafe in Khabarovsk and it says breakfast of the man. And let's check on how advertisement works. Other day I came across an ad saying gifts for the defenders. So I went to that online store and there were gifts like underpants, stereo and a drill. For little boys there were toys like soldiers and cars. There are three different opinions on the circle of persons their congratulations should be addressed to. According to the first opinion, we have to congratulate only professional military personnel, regardless of gender. According to the second opinion, we can congratulate all people who somehow were involved in the army, especially veterans, also regardless of gender. And the third opinion is that on this day, we should congratulate all Russian male citizens, even those who never had anything to do with the army. And in my experience, this third opinion prevails in the understanding of the Defender of the Fatherland Day in today's Russia. When I was in school, girls of our class also gave small presents to our boys. It was our 11th grade, like the last one, and we made like a tea party. But a fun fact that in Russian schools, tea parties or chipitia, it's not like this traditional ceremony. No, it's just kind of a meal on the desk with candies and soft drinks instead of tea. But whatever, it was always interesting and fun. And I don't know where it comes from. I think it's only like the Russian school thing. I wonder if this exists in other countries. If you do have it, please share it in comments. So yeah, yeah, we threw this uh, party for our boys and we made it in the marine style, so we were dressed in these sailor's tops and we made this uh, special cake with their faces and I painted this poster 
which is saying Dear boys, happy February 23rd. Be strong and brave from the girls of the 11th A grade. One year before we made another gift, so it were like Mars chocolate bars, like Mars God of War, with faces of our boys, armory and shoulder straps. This was designed by me as well, by the way. Back then it seemed as something normal for us to congratulate our school boys with these military attributes. But now I'm rethinking it, like why I wrote be strong and brave? Because this is what I associated with masculinity. I couldn't write just be happy. The thing is that in Russia there is a compulsory military service for men and some people are against it, including myself. But by such wishes, society kind of implies that every boy must go to the army. He has to be strong and brave. Otherwise, he's not a man. But what about men who don't want to go to the army? Or what about people who don't identify as males and they don't want to be congratulated on that holiday? Now let's talk about the International Women's Day. This holiday originated in the beginning of the last century, when inequality was sparing women to campaign for change. Thousands of women in different countries marched to demand shorter hours, better pay and voting rights. In Russia, demonstrations coincided with the beginning of the February Revolution. In February of 1917, Russian women began a strike for bread and peace in response to the deaths of Russian soldiers in World War I. The women continued to strike until the emperor was forced to abdicate and the provisional government granted women the right to vote. Throughout the whole 20th century, Russian women were fighting on an equal footing with men. They were building communism, raising kids and working in production while their husbands were fighting in the Great Patriotic War. And Russian women are still fighting, even today. Unfortunately, in today's Russia, the 8th of March is seen only as a female counterpart of the Defender of the Fatherland Day. And let's see what gifts are advertised for this holiday. Here we see some beauty products, mostly creams. In supermarkets, they display pillows, shampoos and dolls, everything in red and pink colors. I wonder how much profit sellers make on these holidays. So again, when I was in school, our boys also made the same kind of party as we had on the February 23rd. They gave us some gifts, some chocolates and hair bands. And also they were singing nice songs for us and we played some games and so on. And traditionally on this day, men give flowers to women and congratulations would be like, our dear ladies always stay the same, wonderful and beautiful. And this is where it becomes disturbing. The problem is that we are forgetting the initial meaning of this holiday because it is a holiday that celebrates feminism achievements, not just femininity. And all these flowers look so absurd against the backdrop of how horribly misogynistic and sexist Russia is. When we still don't have a law against domestic violence, when people get away with sexual harassment, when people who paint body positive pictures are imprisoned for pornography distribution, and when in <laughs> labor classes in our schools we're divided according to gender so that girls are learning how to cook and sew and boys are learning how to make stools. This was in my school, by the way. I just can't. And our society still doesn't care about it because in today's Russia, it's even kind of shameful to support feminism, especially for men. Or maybe it's not shameful, but they just don't think about it because people are too busy with surviving in this country. Only several years ago, Russian feminists started to speak up, saying that it's not flowers that they want to get for the 8th of March, but equal rights. Some artists and musicians also make statements on this topic. And I'm really glad that in today's Russia, people learn more about ideas of feminism and uh, female solidarity. Anyway, so to conclude, I would say that Defender of the Fatherland Day and International Women's Day in Russia are amazing holidays because they celebrate things that are so important for our country, heroism of our defenders and women's rights. And 
These holidays are also very practical because they are celebrated in a row and Russian people have a specific date when they can give gifts to their loved ones. But the problem is that we are forgetting the roots of these holidays. I think that on the 23rd of February we should congratulate only military people regardless of gender instead of reminding boys that they should go to the army. And on the 8th of March we should celebrate feminism and to check on the current situation with human rights instead of simply wishing girls to remain as light as flowers. I think there's nothing wrong with traditionally manly men and womanly women if people want to, if they want to go to the army or if they want to stay at home to raise kids, that's okay. But uh, it's very bad when this is imposed and dictated by society. This is the end of my video and I am anticipating an interesting discussion in comments. Tell me if you have the same holidays in your country and how you celebrate them. Do you have your own version of Defender of the Fatherland Day? And are these two holidays kind of juxtaposed on gender basis in your country as is done in Russia? And making this video wouldn't be possible without the support of my Patreons and PayPal Pals. Thank you guys very much for your support. I really appreciate it. And thanks everybody for watching. Like this video, write a comment, subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video. Be strong, be brave, be light, be beautiful, wonderful, whatever you want.